All right, what's going on? All right, so today we're going to talk about Rod Serling, uh, creator of the Twilight Zone, screenwriter, television producer, on and off screen activist, um, author, you know? Uh, so, you know, Rod Serling, he's kind of uh, of the modern day and anthological sort of TVs and books. He's kind of the first one to really do it at a major national level like that. Um, you know, with the Twilight Zone, primarily uh, being the main series from the 50s, which, in my opinion, I think is the best version of it because he had the most creative control over that. <clears throat> and from the Twilight Zone on, he's just been very influential and they used him for a lot of mystery and sci-fi or narration or anything uh, dark and weird um, from, like, from 50 to 80, he was pretty much a part of or had some hand in if they wanted to do something like that. Um, so Twilight Zone actually was a tough sell, you know? And it's got its start um, actually from Ricky Ricardo, Desi Lu Productions, um, or <laughs> Ricky Ricardo. <laughs> um, Desi Lu Productions, they pretty much put a little sample of it in one of their shows with, uh, you know, um, Desi Arnaz narrating it and it went well and I guess the networks decided they would like to see what a show would look like. Uh, it went on for multiple seasons. There's there's countless episodes and so many memorable ones um, from the 50s and so many things that you know we probably would have seen an episode in something like The Simpsons or Family Guy or Rick and Morty or something that pays homage to one of the stories nowadays. Um, so my opinion about it, and the reason I wanted to make a video today about it was <clears throat> just that we see right now that the anth you know anthology sort of approach is, is working for for this kind of independent streaming. You know, shows like Black Mirror um, are able to kind of sustain their own fan base and. I kind of wish that Rod Serling would have been able to produce some of this stuff nowadays, but, you know, then we wouldn't be inspired and have all those works to build off of from the past when it was more limited. But a lot of it was just he was having trouble finding funding, you know, and, and they had a lot of changes and it was just a, a real tough gig to appeal, appeal to network execs. And I think one good thing I can say about today's media is we are moving away from that kind of frame of thinking about trying to make it on the network or even the fact of the networks being the only options to produce um, quality work and have that kind of funding. Nowadays, um, I think it really comes down to camera and lighting effectiveness now, you know, with LED lighting and mirrorless cameras and if you still have good writers and you know people that can organize um, a kind of a, a staged production um you can put something together and as long as you can sell it you don't need that much involvement from the networks except for marketing uh they they have all the marketing data the billboards the commercials but um if you have anything that goes viral on its own, they, they're they pretty much left out. So, um, and I definitely think the more stories you have, the more experience you have of relating to people and drawing people in and writing clever hooks, you know, like Rod Serling did, um, the more chance you have of something reaching that vast potential. And, you know, it, it might have only taken 3,000 maybe dedicated Twilight Zone fans to keep the show in funding nowadays, you know? Uh, 3000 maybe each paying $3 a month. You know, we're looking at about $9,000. Um, I definitely think that a couple months savings, you should be able to produce, you know, maybe five episodes for about $40,000. Uh, and 
and if you could sell those for to continue to get more subscriptions, I think that that's, that's just kind of the business right now. Uh, we're pretty much every brand and every person is their own magazine stand, and there's subscribe here, you know, even in, in YouTube, subscribe. Well, I remember the word subscribe coming from subscribing to gaming magazines and comic books, you know, and I would get those in the mail and, you know, you send your subscription and your money or, and they, they charge you continuously and, or however it, it would work at the time. And you, you know, they could, they could put you on the list. So we're moving back to that. Um, <clears throat> in terms of individual creators and, and authors and people that are creating content pretty much. Um, and you know, books, you know, short stories, those aren't, those are kind of coming back in, you know, flash fiction because of the Amazon short reads, which is kind of a new category where they're basing books uh, based on how long it would take you to read it. So, you know, you can get, and that comes down to a per page cut, you know, so you could write 300 pages and it all be one novel or you could write 300 pages and you release them 10 pages a, a thing and it comes out that the shorter reads now are paying more per page to write um, so but you just have to figure out the whole way to market it and whole different way to do it and um, so I have a series that I'm working on um, that's an anthology and it's it's a big universe uh, it's not the mystery genre um, but there are going to be a couple mystery episodes but it is just kind of like city snapshots day to day non -sequen sequential characters um, or storylines just little snapshots I want guest directors um, definitely just a place for everybody to have a platform to tell a bunch of stories that you know I have and a couple writers around me are kind of all sharing and building and uh, you know, it's a good time. So shows like Black Mare, you know, that are kind of paying, you know, homage to Rod Serling. Uh, I hope to see continue in like more of different formats, you know, and, you know, there's there's endless potential. Uh, I really feel that we're kind of in the wild west of literature and media right now and content consumption that. Um, people are just looking for the model, you know, and to see what, what are you going to do with the, the model, you know, uh, because, yeah, the same, the same execs that Rod Serling had a problem dealing with uh, 60, 70 years ago, geez, um, people are still having the same problems. Now, granted, the, the style of, uh, you know, the market has changed and what people are into has changed and what we like to be advertised and see on our screens has changed. But the same gatekeepers or people that are kind of not really in the arts, but promoters of the art, uh, they're the same hard, hard to please people, you know? Um, you could tell them a good story about something and if, if they don't have an actual relation to it, they don't think that it's gonna sell, but you know, then you could have been saying that same story to about 200 different bars in the U.S. And you know that that story got everybody in the same ways. And you know which which parts were, were interesting and what parts give people hope. And, you know, and you've already tested it. You're, you're out there doing the work. They're not there doing They're not out there doing the work. They're not out there mingling and living life and um, coming up with this stuff. So. Um, but not everybody has, you know, that idea to go test their stuff fair. And usually if you can, you might be able to tailor something for what they want, which is also fair because, you know, how you pitch to a network um, depends on how many different things you have to offer, you know. So, you know, let's not bash them too hard. I know the, the job is in, in itself kind of a lot. Um, but the point is, is that we don't need gatekeepers for relatability. We don't need any of that stuff anymore right now. Um, you know, when the new model comes and 
you know, there is same marketing streams. Uh, we'll have similar problems, but for right now, it's it's the Wild West. And, um, you know, I encourage anybody to see um, a lot of Twilight Zone episodes and, you know, read anything that he's kind of put his hands in because uh, you're kind of going to get a glimpse of this model in the past, you know. So uh, it's very interesting. Um, definitely did my research. I liked Rod Sterling before, but learning more about his struggles, uh, it kind of just illuminated this idea that this, these cool platforms that we have access to right now, like YouTube, you know. Uh, anyways, like and subscribe. Uh, we'll be back with more. If you have any questions, email them at 24Creative. Uh, we've got the Patreon. We've got some more exclusive videos posted on there. Uh, and yeah, stay tuned.